Hello, dear friends. Today we will watch a very interesting topic with you. I hope you like it, and you will watch the video until the end, and then write your opinion. The King Speaks. What awaits the princes William and Harry because of the illness of Charles III? When the King of Great Britain Charles III announced that he had cancer, his younger son Harry flew to London to ask for an audience with his father. Meanwhile, the heir to the throne, Prince William, and other members of the royal family took on some of the responsibilities of Charles III. Why the king decided to announce his illness publicly, and what is happening now at the court, RTV told the journalist internationalist, specialist in modern monarchies, and author of a telegram channel, Everyone Can Be Kings, Ariadna Rokossovskaya. How often do members of the royal family announce their illness publicly? This phenomenon is not just rare, it is the first. When Queen Elizabeth II had already died, Buckingham Palace only issued a press release saying that she was feeling very bad. For the British royal family, leaks about the health of its members were not typical. One can say that the situation with Charles III is a kind of breakthrough in this manner of communication with the public, with compatriots and in general, with everyone who follows the life of the British royal family. This is really the first such case when not even the royal family, but the king himself announces to everyone that he has such a dangerous diagnosis. Charles III explained that he did this to stop speculation and support those who are fighting the same disease. This is very typical for the British royal family. Charles initially stated that his reign would be more open than that of Elizabeth II and partly fulfills his promise. Accordingly, there is no procedure for such a case. When Elizabeth II died, she was only with Camilla, who then lived in their house with Charles, Burkle, on the territory of the Balmoral estate. Then, from all over the world, the rest of the relatives gathered, and only Harry did not have time to say goodbye to his grandmother. Why Prince Harry returned to Great Britain. Harry has long been trying to get an audience with his father. It is no secret that they have a very difficult relationship since he released his book, The Spare. This is not announced officially, but people who are interested in the life of the British royal family know that Charles III allegedly informed Harry that if he wants to meet, he needs to apply for an audience. Therefore, for Harry this is, in principle, a very important moment, who replaces Charles III. For this case, there are so-called state advisors. There are several of them. These are senior working members of the family to whom Charles III can delegate his powers. As of today, they are Queen Camilla, Prince William, Charles III's sister, Royal Princess Anne, and his youngest brother, Prince Edward. Officially, this list also includes Prince Harry and Prince Andrew, but they are not allowed. Prince Harry himself refused the status of a working member of the family. Prince Andrew was removed from performing these duties by Elizabeth II because of the scandal with his American adventures, and Charles III left her decision in force. Nevertheless, each of the members of the State Council must have a living space in Great Britain. Harry and Meghan Markle occupied Frogmore Cottage on the territory of Windsor Park, but in the spring they were, roughly speaking, asked to move out since they live in the USA. Harry, obviously, expected that he, as it is usually accepted, would be allocated some apartments in Kensington Palace, where his mother, Princess Diana, used to live, and where there are apartments for Prince William and Princess of Wales Kate. But he was told that there were no free apartments, although this is not true. Thus, Harry has no living space on the territory of Great Britain. In September, he flew to London and for the first time in his life faced a situation when he had nowhere to stay and had to live in hotels. Naturally, he did not like it. He tried to get an audience with his father, but they did not provide it, although he physically needs to meet with Charles and solve the issue of real estate, which is due to him as a state advisor. Still, Harry is the son of the king, so he is eager to meet with Charles, not only to discuss the problem with housing. Of course, he is interested in the health of his father, but this is his personal initiative. There is no protocol that provides that everyone immediately runs to the King Charles, does not exist. Moreover, I think that the members of the royal family learned about the illness of Charles 
before the publication in the media, and only Harry could find out about it from the press or from the nearest environment if he still has some ways to get information from Buckingham Palace. What duties will Charles III continue to perform the Prime Minister of Great Britain Rishi Sunak announced that the King's illness was diagnosed at an early stage and that he will continue to communicate with Charles III. What does this mean? The King's duties include weekly meetings with the acting Prime Minister at Buckingham Palace on Wednesdays. At this time, the Prime Ministers of Great Britain confidentially inform the King as the head of state. What decisions are made in the government? What is happening in Parliament? If Rishi Sunak says that he will continue further communication with Charles, it means that His Majesty is able to receive the Prime Minister. It means that he is not lying in negligee, but is in working condition. That is, he really temporarily refuses his public duties, but leaves behind the rest, which are also not few. He can veto all laws passed by Parliament, meet with the Prime Minister, that is, he continues to work. From this, it can be concluded that he is not in a serious condition. Where will the King be treated? I very much doubt that the British royal family will announce where Charles is being treated. When Kate Middleton gave birth for the first time, it was announced that it happened in a regular clinic, following the example of Princess Diana. Prince William became the first heir to the British throne, born in a hospital. The hospital where Kate Middleton was lying was in blockade because of journalists. Therefore, I think that, most likely, they will prefer not to disclose this information. In principle, the representatives of the royal family said very little. For example, we do not know what tumour was found in Charles. We can only guess that it is related to the prostate gland, since the king was hospitalised precisely in connection with its enlargement. They did not say what stage, what treatment. Therefore, all that is known is that he has oncology. How do Prince William, Princess Anne and other advisers cope with their duties? Princess Anne is considered the most active working horse in the British royal family. In fact, the members of the British royal family, and not only Princess Anne, King Charles and Prince William, but also Prince Edward, his wife Sophie Wessex, and even their children, perform royal duties every day because, naturally, the king does not have time for everything. Moreover, these duties are taken over by, one might say, distant relatives, dukes, whom we will not even think that they are related to the royal family. Princess Anne annually conducts several hundred events. Reports on all meetings organized by members of the royal family are published on their official website, so that the British know that the royal persons do not sit with their hands folded. With the departure of King Charles from the scene, in general, nothing will change. And his wife Queen Camilla will continue to perform her duties, and Princess Anne. Apparently, they will reshuffle their program of events. I think they will just distribute among themselves. Charles also has more than a hundred events a year, albeit less than Princess Anne. The only duty that is very difficult to redistribute is the meeting of the King with foreign leaders arriving in Great Britain. They, of course, come not for negotiations with him, since he does not make any decisions, but only signs those that have already been adopted by Parliament and government. Nevertheless, as the head of state, he is the host party. On the first evening of the state visit, a state banquet is held. All this is done by the King's administration, in which Charles III personally participates together with representatives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and he also meets the guests. Here it should be said that Charles III did not sit idly by. He prepared a very worthy change. William is quite capable of fully taking over the performance of all royal duties. Not for nothing in the year before last, when it was still unclear what the health of Queen Elizabeth II was, they talked a lot about the fact that she, bypassing Charles, would pass the throne to William. He, in principle, is an absolutely ready king. Even if Charles is in a serious condition, William will be able to perform the duties of the regent, as this, in fact, happens in royal families around the world. For example, as did Queen Margaret of Denmark, who on January 12 handed over the Danish throne to her son, Crown Prince Frederick. Before that, in February of last year, she had surgery on her back, and she is much older than Charles III. She is 83 years old. For some time, 
Margaret could not move, and her duties were fully taken over by Prince Frederick. In royal families, they are taught this from infancy, so William at his 40 years old, already a ready king, he is quite capable of performing his father's duties exactly as much as necessary. Are they preparing for the possible death of the king in the palace? I think that not in the palace, but in parliament and in the government, there is some plan of action in case of the death of King Charles III. When Queen Elizabeth II was already bad, there were leaks of information in the British media that a plan for the transition period, for the transfer of power to King Charles, and the coronation was being developed. Such things are always provided for in Britain. In Parliament, there is a special authorised person who deals with these issues. The ceremony, as it was in the situation with Queen Elizabeth, is fresh in memory. Therefore, I think that there are no questions in this case, but this is not the task of Buckingham Palace, but the government of Great Britain. Will they change the new banknotes? By the way, banknotes with Elizabeth II still have circulation. A month after the death of the Queen, new banknotes with Charles III were printed. However, the British state treasury announced that they would change them only as they physically become obsolete, so this is not a problem. What will happen to Camilla in the event of the death of the King? Bearing the loud title of Queen, she, nevertheless, in fact, is the Queen consort and cannot claim the throne. The first in the list of heirs is, of course, Prince William, followed by Prince George, then Princess Charlotte, Prince Louis, Prince Harry and his children. Next come the more distant relatives, Prince Andrew and his children, Princess Anne and her children, Prince Edward and his children. Camilla has no rights at all. I think that her fate will be roughly the same as that of Elizabeth Bowslian. This is the last widowed queen we remember, the mother of Queen Elizabeth II. She lived a wonderful life after the death of her husband, George IV. She moved to Royal Lodge, where the Duke of York now lies. I think that in the case of Camilla, there is not even such a need. She has Highgrove House, which she bought at the time when they had a romance with the Prince of Wales, and she wanted to be closer to him. A beautiful house, even despite the abundance of real estate with the King and the estate that they rent from Prince William in Cornwall. She did not sell Highgrove House and supports it. Though she has gardens, vegetable gardens, she spends some time there. I think, most likely, if something happens, then she will spend a decent old age there. Maybe she will engage in charity, like Elizabeth Bowsleon, attend some events. Especially since she is the patron of a huge number of different societies, she took on a lot of burden after the death of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. So she will not be idle, but she has no rights to the throne, of course. Most likely, she will receive a title. Financially, I think the king took care of her very well, because he is a very rich man. You can have different attitudes to how their relationship started, how they treated Princess Diana. But the fact is that Camilla is the love of King Charles's life, and probably for her he is also the love of her life. 